Good day, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Just Fish Outdoors. I'm your host, Dale York, and I designed Just Fish Outdoors to focus on freshwater, lakes, and streams, and to provide information, tips, and techniques, along with how-to segments for catching everything from crappie to catfish. We will also provide tips on equipment, tackle, boating, and much, much more. All of this is aimed at helping you catch more fish and have fun doing it. So join us each week as we talk about my favorite subject, fishing. Uh, And folks, that brings us to our special segment. Uh, You know, it's getting that time of year when uh, we need to start thinking about getting our boats, trailers, and motors ready for the spring. And uh, I've asked my brother to come in on the show today and uh, help us talk about things that we need to look at, uh, things we need to think about. Uh, because, folks, you don't want to spend your first day on the water uh, stranded <laughs> on, on your boat uh, at the boat ramp or even worse, stranded on the water or even on the side of the road because of mechanical failure with your boat, trailer, or motor. If you properly winterized your boat before you uh, put it up for the winter, you know, a lot of these information, a lot of these tips you probably already covered uh, but we'll cover them and, and throw them out there, too, just to, to make a good list of things you really need to look at and be aware of. You know, even in uh, your motor factors, your manufacturer's handbook for your motor or your boat, you'll also find a list of maintenance schedules that need to be done at least yearly. So take a look at that as well. Well, with that being said, let's start with the easy stuff that you may already know for instance you know the first thing that i like to tell anybody is perform a walk around of your boat motor and trailer that's that's the first thing you need to do do a visual inspection of everything from from the tongue of the trailer all the way back to the end of the motor you know what you're doing you're checking for any damage uh broken welds uh you're inspecting the tire wear uh, you you may be looking at your bunk board condition or your roller condition. You're also looking for any signs of rodent presence. Boy, I tell you, those rodents, you know, it, if those mice get into your boat, they love to eat insulation off of wiring, and uh, they can really cause you a lot of problems. So if you see any evidence of rodents, you really need to start looking real close at all your electrical wiring because you you really need to uh, to inspect that from stem to stern because you you could have a real problem there. Uh, also, take a look and see if you have you can see any missing trailer pieces and, and just the overall condition of your rig. You know, the next thing you need to do is you need to clean the inside and outside of it. You know that that will sometimes. Uh, make you get into spots that you normally wouldn't see visually, and uh, that kind of makes you look from the, your boat, motor, and trailer all the way from one end to the other. And uh, you know any possible things that you can see while you're doing that, you know you need to take care of. Okay, now let's let's start with a list of things that uh, y- you know you really need to take care of here. Uh, number one would be charge your batteries or, or replace them if they're more than a couple of years old. Uh, boat batteries live a very, very tough life, and most definitely, uh, <laughs> you know, and, and unless you have some high dollar AGM batteries in there, uh, if you're <clears throat> still dealing with uh, normal lead acid batteries, most of your boat batteries aren't going to last more than two to three years, and uh, you just might as well take them out and be done with it because the last thing you want to do is be out in the middle of a lake and your motor won't start due to a battery failure. You know, the next thing that I like to tell people is. Replace your fuel filters. Uh, almost all outboards have some kind of uh, uh, fuel filtering system, and uh, you really need to look at that and uh, you know replace those yearly. The next thing, you know, if you didn't replace your lower unit lube before you put it up for the winter, that's something it really, really needs to take a look at. The lube for the lower unit, you know, if you start getting that out of there and it's milky and it, it, it looks too like it has too much water in it, that can be a sign of possible seal damage or behind your prop, uh, and that's something else you might need to take care of. But at the le- very least, uh, that's something I tell everyone to replace every year. Of course, spark plugs, the, uh, the next thing that I, I personally like to replace every year, and, and it's a fairly inexpensive part, but it sure goes a long way in 
and giving me peace of mind, and that's uh, my water pump impeller. You know, in most cases, uh, you know, you can replace that in an hour or so, dropping the lower unit off most motors, and uh, they're very inexpensive, and uh, that's something that, uh, uh, you know, you need to take care of. What what else comes to mind, Brian? Oh, definitely that water pump. That water pump could be a lifesaver. They're easily able to uh, get... Uh, old age you get cracked and uh, if they're not replaced every year two years max they're liable to break off on you another thing to check too with that water pump folks if your boat is stored outside you know you got a cover on it you keep it outside before you uh, haul that thing to the lake uh, when you do your walk around inspection look at the uh the uh, ejector port for your water pump where it comes out the, on the lower side of your motor we have a little insect here in Oklahoma called mud daubers, and they do like to get up in that hole and build a nest. And they will get in there in the late fall, and they'll put you a nice big mud plug in that <laughs> yeah. in that hole back there. And uh, that's one thing you definitely want to check on before uh, before you get it out of the yard. Yeah, we we've seen that firsthand at boat ramps, folks. Uh, you know, they, they start <clears> up their motor and and the motor has no water discharge. Of course, if it has no water discharge, it can't cool the block, and and you could be in for a real problem if that's one of those cases. So, uh, you know, it's really easy to fix if you do have some mud up in there. You know, get you a piece of wire and poke it up in there and get all the mud out of it, and uh, you know, you'll be just fine. Uh, the next thing uh, we we'll cover here is uh, check all your steering throttle and shift cable or your hydraulic systems if your steering's via, via hydraulic uh, and check the connections to make sure that they work smoothly and are tight you know if you see any evidence uh, if you have a hydraulic steering system and you see any evidence uh, of a leaking hydraulic fluid or your your steering doesn't seem to be as smooth as it used to be you know you may uh, need to fill that system up but be sure and check all your cables if you have the older systems and make sure everything works in that in that particular area. Uh, the next thing you'll need to do is uh, actually fire up the engine and check, make sure it starts. Check and make sure that you know you have a water discharge out out your water pump. And then uh, you know while your engine's running, pull your kill switch. Make sure the engine dies immediately when you pull your kill switch. The kill switch is one of those somewhat overlooked safety features. Uh, but at the same time, folks, that's something that can save your life in a heartbeat. So don't overlook that kill switch and uh, always check it periodically to make sure it works. Another thing we can look at is remove the prop off your lower unit. One of the things that can happen is you can run into monofilament fishing line or even braided fishing line, and that fishing line will wind up behind your prop and your lower unit seal and over a period of time, it'll actually cut that seal on your lower unit. And that's how you can start having water uh, ingest into uh, your lower unit lube. And if that lower unit lube gets too thin, uh, you know, you could be looking at some serious repair damage on that lower unit as far as dollars go. So, uh, you know, don't forget to take that prop off and uh, check for any anything that's uh, unusual you know, check for bent shafts. Make sure your shaft is true. Uh, l- put you some grease back on that prop shaft before you put your uh, prop back on it. Uh, and then make sure you torque it down to whatever your manufacturer requirements are uh, when you put it back on. And another thing to check is all your electronics, your fish finders, uh, your GPSs. Any other electronics you may have on the boat, uh, check your running lights. Uh, plug all your running lights in. Make sure everything is functional before you get on the water and before you need them. Man, it, you know, nothing's worse than, than being out there on the water and uh, it's starting to get dark and you have no running lights. Uh, th- that's an accident looking to happen, so be careful about that. Uh, also, if you got a horn, check that. You know, toot that, make sure that works. What else comes to mind about that, Brian? Well, on your horn, you know, of course you want to check and make sure your horn works. If your boat does not have a horn, buy you a can of uh, air with the little horn attachment onto it. Uh, folks, uh, from time to time, you will find a lake ranger, uh, at the boat ramp, and he will be doing safety inspections. 
And, uh, you know, these are things, these things, that, a lot of these things that we are going over, he will check at the boat ramp. So, you know, make sure you have some kind of sounding device for your boat, you know, regardless of whether it's fitted, you know, with a, from the factory with a horn or not, have something that you can make some noise with. Always check all of your safety equipment. Check your life jackets, check your horn, check your kill switch if required, and you've got to have one. Check your fire extinguisher, make sure it's up to date, make sure it's pressurized. Check all your safety equipment because uh, you definitely want that stuff functional before you need it. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, there's there's one other thing, too, there that a lot of people miss, and that's your throwable device. Yeah. Uh, make sure you have a boat cushion or some type of of uh, approved throwable device that uh, that's in your boat that you can throw to somebody that's in the water and in distress. Yeah, you know, de- depending on your boat's length, uh, there's some different <clears throat> things that are required for different boat lengths. Next thing is we'll talk about, uh, you know, your trolling motor. If you got a trolling motor on your boat, and especially if you've had if you've stored your boat outside where the weather can get to it or rain on it over the over the winter you know you you'll want to crank that trolling motor up make sure it works if it's a foot controlled trolling motor you'll want to make sure that it's directional the cable all works uh, get in there and and uh, squirt some good lubrication in there on those cables and 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 uh, that'll go a long way to keeping that trolling motor functional throughout the fishing season the next thing to talk about is, uh, uh, you know, lubricate all your moving connections, you know, on your trolling motor and on your big motor. You know, your your big motor pivots on a main arm uh, or main shaft. You want to make sure that you grease all that, make sure that uh, that's not a problem. The same thing on your trolling motor uh, where your mount go raises up and down, grease all that. Uh, lubricate that everything on your boat that needs lubrication you know sometimes you may even have to squirt a little something on your uh, your hinges for your doors or whatever your access portals make sure that all that's uh, taken care of bef- before you uh, get to that point that way you won't have near as many problems you know the next thing to look at would be to uh, check your fuel lines paying careful attention to uh, hose clamps if you have those I also want to uh, fill of your your fuel lines, and for those of you running uh, oil injected units, you also want to pay attention to the same thing on your fuel on your oil lines. You know, check that line to see if it's brittle or it's cracked. They can really cause you a lot of problem out on the water trying to run down an air leak in a fuel line where your motor will run a little bit, but it it won't run real good. You know, if there's any any indication or anything you don't like. Uh, go ahead and replace it. Fuel line's cheap, hose clamps are cheap, and uh, it could sure save you a lot of time and trouble out there on the water. The next thing to look at is uh, probably paying real close attention uh, to your tires. You know, anything that looks out of the ordinary there, you know, this thing, you know, the boat's only good once it gets in the water. You still have to get it home and get it to the lake. Definitely. And so you, you've got to have a good trailer sitting under it. Last thing to check is your uh, owner's manual or factory uh, service manual and lubricate all the items that it lists in your manual. You know, your manual has a, a wealth of information in it and uh, get comfortable with it, read it, understand it. Uh, you know, if you have any questions, call your local dealer. They can they can help you translate that, what what's going on. Uh, you know, the items we discussed, all these things need to be done or need to be inspected. And many of these items need to be replaced every year. Uh, you know, if you don't feel comfortable doing it, we have some very reputable marine dealers in the area. Uh, you can call them, set up an appointment, and uh, take your boat in, and, and they'll take care of those things for you and get you cranked up and ready to go for the spring. Uh, the next thing we're going to be a little more specific on is we're going to talk about the trailer. Brian, what's the things that come to mind on the trailer? <clears throat> well, first thing that comes to mind on the trailer are, are, of course, the tires. Check your tires. Check your tie-downs, uh, both your winch strap on the front and your tie-downs on the back. Your lights. Make sure all your lights are functional. Uh, you know, your turn signals, your brake lights, what have you. You know, we've all been there. We've come back from the lake, and we've gotten behind somebody after the sun's went down that didn't have any lights on their trailer. 
So, uh, you know, don't be that guy. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah you, you, you don't want one of those guys with the funny little red lights on his car to remind you that remind uh, you your trailer you lights aren't working. Yeah, that your trailer lights aren't working. <laughs> that, that could be an expensive conversation right there. Uh, you know, folks, really don't forget the trailer. Uh, the trailer <clears throat> is often overlooked during the spring maintenance ritual and giving that trailer a once-over is a necessity. There's no worse thing than be broke down on the side of the road, and we see them all summer long. You know, how many trailers do you see on the side of the road that, uh, you know, they have, they're have jacked up, they have a tire off of it, or they're, you know, they're missing parts off the trailer or something, you know. and, and uh, All uh, the above. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, all the above. And, uh, you know, our fishing time is pretty valuable, and the last thing we want to do is worry about uh, breaking down on the way back and forth to the lake. So really, really, folks, I can't impress upon you enough to, to really follow some of these steps when you're going through this trailer. You know, also, go put your boat in the water. And then look over the trailer with the boat off of it. You know, you're you're looking for rollers or bunks that are damaged. You're looking for anything that's out of the ordinary part. You, if you even suspect the part is damaged, go ahead and replace it. Uh, you know, the, a lot of these parts are fairly inexpensive. Check all the lights, as Brian was saying earlier, turn signals, brakes, all that stuff. And, and also give a quick look at, at, at your wiring and your connectors on the tow vehicle. You know, if you see any little scratches or scrapes on the insulation, go ahead and take care of that. Uh, you know, wrap them up in some electrical tape or some other shrink wrap or something because, uh, you know, you can be going down the road at night <clears throat> and, uh, you know, one of those bare spots rub up against your trailer hitch or something and boom, you blew a fuse in the middle of the night and you may have no lights. <laughs> you know, not even trailer lights, but you may have no vehicle lights. So, so you know, it just takes a second to overlook to look at that stuff. And uh, you know, if you have any concerns at all, go ahead and and uh, take care of those at that time. I cannot stress enough: check your wheel bearings, grease and or repack them uh, often, folks. The thing you have to think about here, especially with the older type bearings. Uh, that require packing is you pull this thing to the lake and the bearings get warm the grease inside those bearings gets more liquefied the and when you put that thing in the water uh you get some water in that bearing i don't care how tight it's sealed for the older style you get some water in there and uh, over the course of pulling it back and forth back and forth uh, it doesn't take very long to you're going to be looking at a bearing failure if you're not careful. D- don't you agree with that, Brian? Oh, most definitely. Like he said, folks, can't pull one of one of the older styles. You know, you can't pull it around the block without heating up that grease and that bearing. And like he said, every time you stick this thing in the water, you're going to get some kind of moisture in there. It doesn't take as much of that moisture as most people think to cause a bearing failure. And when a bearing fails, uh, you're there. Yeah. Uh, that's 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 the that's it. You have to take and pull the pull the trailer tire and wheel off off of the off of the trailer. I mean, you got to take it somewhere and have a fresh bearing pressed into the hub. Yeah. And then you have to repack the outer side of it when you when you mount it back up on the trailer before you can go anywhere. And hopefully you haven't marred or scarred the spindle on the end of the axle of the boat trailer when this bearing goes out. So uh yeah, I mean, like he said, folks, you know, next to tires, this is a very, very important thing for you to check. And the other item that I can't stress enough is uh to check that trailer coupler or how that trailer actually couples to the ball on your ve- your tow vehicle. Check and make sure that latch assembly is all working smoothly. If there's any problem, uh, you know, take it to your local dealer and have them take a look at it. Uh, also, you know, really pay close attention. Really inspect your trailer hitch on your tow vehicle. Make sure everything's tight there, uh, that everything's seated like it should be, uh, and you don't have any uh, any loose parts, so... Be careful about that. You just can't be uh, too careful when you're checking not only the trailer coupler, uh, but but also uh, you know your tires and things like that. Because if you have a failure there, you're you're done. And uh, folks, I, you know I firmly believe if you follow some of these guidelines and getting your boat ready for spring, uh, it'll pay off big time. 
with uh, hours of hassle-free time on the water. And uh, not only will your boat perform better, but the likelihood of a problem occurring will be significantly reduced, I think. Uh, You know, there's so many things that we've covered in the show today. And if you like some additional information, feel free to send me an email we can uh, talk about that. We'll be more than happy to discuss anything with it you might have. Anything else come to mind, Brian, that really needs to stand out here? Just right off the top of my head, uh, one thing that uh, folks might want to invest in is a good trailer hitch lock that they can put on their uh, hitch after they put it on their tow vehicle, uh, lock that trailer down on the, onto the back of their tow vehicle, and if they store their boat outside, put that latch down and put that lock in there. Uh, while it's while it's at home in storage, uh, it might just make somebody think twice about trying to liberate it from you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, another thing that just popped into my mind. Uh, you know, if you've got your 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 boat stored at home, and uh, you know, it's, especially in the winter time, this time of year, folks, take and lower that motor down as much as you can, because what can happen is it can rain or snow and get water inside that prop. And uh, then once that does that, it can freeze, and it can actually crack your prop hub. So uh, be careful uh, and take some caution in doing that. And, uh, Brian, that's that's a good piece of advice is to lock that trailer. when it's with you, Even when you're at the lake, make sure you got your trailer hawk on there. Uh, that way, uh, you know, someone won't think maybe they need it more than you do. <laughs> yeah. Okay, uh, like I said, folks, if you need anything else, uh, send me an email. We can we can talk about it. And if you have any other questions, you can get in touch with me, or you can definitely call your local marine dealer, and they can help you out. Uh, Brian, thanks for being on the show today, and uh, I, I hope we've helped some folks get ready for the spring, and uh, hopefully they'll have some uh, trouble-free fishing this year. Folks, send us an email. Tell us how you like the show or how we can improve on it. If you have any suggestions or uh, for a topic, let us know. We'll try to put a show together for you. And, folks, don't forget, Just Fish Outdoors is available to listen anytime. If you'd like uh, to know more about Just Fish Outdoors or anything we can help with, uh, just drop us a line, justfishoutdoors at justfish.com. Folks, get out and enjoy one of the many lakes or streams we're blessed to have. Thanks for listening, and be sure to catch us next week. This is Dale York from Just Fish Outdoors saying we'll catch you later.